So back in 2019, I made a video about original Xbox emulation and the challenges that were faced at the time. And if you want some history on why OG Xbox emulation isn't anywhere near the level of say Dolphin or PlayStation 2 emulation with PCSX2, then please check out that video. And of course, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But the main takeaway from that deep dive was, OG Xbox emulation, while getting better, was still at a very low percentage of compatibility. And the reason is because of the false starts taken to build Xbox emulators. Initial versions were constructed with HLE techniques or high level emulation. Simply put, HLE would intercept any Xbox calls that were made and replace it with the equivalent calls on the PC side. Now in theory, this would work on a PC because DirectX on the Xbox is mostly compatible with DirectX on a PC and other APIs were also quite compatible with each other. But problems became quite apparent. First is that the original Xbox uses a custom kernel and custom NVIDIA hardware. And while still running x86, it means it's certainly not one-to-one -one compatible. And secondly, HLE breaks down fast when you consider the many revisions of the Xbox SDKs, with many different games built and linked against many different versions of those SDKs. This means the address of a function call is never guaranteed, and it quickly becomes a game of whack-a-mole to try to increase compatibility. Now where we left off was CXBX Reloaded had begun implementing LLE or low level emulation features. It also began to replace its HLE emulation with something more sophisticated. LLE took a more traditional approach to emulate the chipset at an instruction level. This led to improvements, but there was still much work to be done. In 2019, just 37 playable games were available on CXBX Reloaded. So let's fast forward two years later and things have progressed quite a bit. And probably for the first time, original Xbox emulation is now at a level that I would call above average. While still not perfect, it's much improved and the accessibility for the average person to jump in and play is a lot easier. So what's been going on? Well, CXBX Reloaded continues to receive active updates and the compatibility there has improved. We went from 37 playable to 162 playable games. Now keep in mind, this is 162 of the total count of original Xbox games, which is over 1000. Now before you say MVG, you said OG Xbox emulation was much improved. We need to talk about XQMU, or I should say a fork of XQMU known as XMU, which over the last couple of years has had a massive amount of work put into it and according to the XMU website has over 600 games that are playable. That's around 62% and that's a massive step up from where things were left off a few years ago. Now you might be wondering, what's even the point of OG Xbox emulation? After all, the Xbox Series S and X and even the Xbox One X and the VCR Xbox support back compat with OG Xbox games even increasing native resolutions up to 4K? Well, the answer to that is freedom and choice as a consumer. Official Xbox OG back compatibility is really impressive technically, but unfortunately due to licensing issues and other factors, we may never see anywhere near the full library of OG Xbox games running on the Xbox Series S and X. In fact, what this means is many of your favorite exclusive or great original Xbox games that you know and loved may never end up running under back compat. So having an open source emulator like XMU that our community developed and strive to increase compatibility is only a good thing for everyone. Now I mentioned that XMU is a fork of XQMU and this is one of the biggest frustrations that I had with XQMU was that it was simply command line based. There was no UI and you'd have to supply a game which had to be in ISO format as a redump file. Now setting all this up via command line was not particularly easy. The great news is that XMU takes all this away and offers up a really simple and easy to use interface that only has a handful of options. So how do you set up XMU? Well first, install it onto your PC. 
Now, when you run it, it's going to ask you to provide three things, a flash ROM image or BIOS. And if you've used a modded Xbox or even been in the OG Xbox scene, then you'll be quite familiar with one of these. You can easily dump your own if you own a modded OG Xbox, or you could probably look around for them online on places like Xbins. The second thing that you'll need is a dump of the OG Xbox Southbridge, known as the MCPX. This is one of the custom NVIDIA chips that was found in the original Xbox, and once again can be easily dumped if you own a modded Xbox. And yes, you can probably locate one of these online as well. The third thing you'll need is a hard disk image. You'll need to extract your hard disk image from your modded Xbox, or as a much easier alternative, XMU offers a pre-formatted one that has no copyright content on it. And in my experience, this works fine. These three things are enough to boot the Xbox when you launch. Now it's a matter of playing games, which will use the standard ISO file format. And if you're familiar with dumping Xbox discs, you can simply do this yourself if you have a collection of games. XMU also allows for standard X input controllers, so you can plug in, say, an Xbox 360 gamepad or similar, and it should work fine. Now here is the great part of this emulator. It runs really, really well. I tried a few games that were on the compatibility list, and I gotta say, I was very, very impressed. One of the great features of Xbox emulation on both CXBX Reloaded and XMU is the ability to natively upscale resolutions. XMU in particular can upscale resolutions up to 10x, and this feature can be transformative in the right scenarios. For example, let's take a look at the Halo 1 title screen. At 1x, the standard resolution of 480p, the jaggies and mip maps are quite apparent. But now, if we increase native resolution to say 6x and compare, the difference is quite staggering. As another example, take a look at the ground textures at 1x, and then if we natively upscale the resolution to 4x, you can immediately tell the difference. Going all the way up to 10x is even better. But of course, this does come with a performance hit but I recommend that you try this out with different games. The results can be quite impressive. So in conclusion, if you are on the fence about OG Xbox emulation or have the belief that it's still not worth the time and effort, now may be a good time to jump back in. While I do admit that it's still not at the level of Dolphin or most Dreamcast emulators, it's much further than even I expected two years later. Now the last thing that I'll mention is that these emulators are community developed with thousands of hours of research and development being put into both CXBX Reloaded and XMU. And if you want to support them, I'll leave links to their Patreons in the description below. Supporting them can only help with future emulation efforts and increasing that compatibility list so that one day all games can be considered playable. But we are going to leave it here for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to put a like on it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.